Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. Welcome to another video on the Mastering DP500 exam. In this video, we will talk about how to design and build a large format data set in most optimal way to get the maximum performance of the enterprise scale data models in Power BI. Stay tuned! Power BI is a two-edged sword. Let me explain the bold statement. Power BI enables you to quickly get up and running. In literally a few minutes, you can transform a plain white table with a bunch of numbers into nice looking charts and visuals. And you don't need to know a single thing about star schema, facts and dimension tables, relationships and so on. Power BI will get you covered. However, once the requirements begin to scale, you may find yourself in a desperate position with a tough decision on how to proceed. I'll give you a simple analogy. You can ride a bike without the hands on the steering wheel because you're using a cell phone while riding. And you will reach your destination if there is no traffic, no crossroads, no damaged road and so on. However, once you face any of these challenges, you'll probably find yourself on the ground and hopefully not hard injured. It's similar with Power BI. You may sneak without data modeling in some very basic scenarios, but sticking with this behavior will come back to haunt you as soon as things become more complex. And this is especially true as the amount of data starts to grow. You've probably heard about big data already. And maybe you'll think, if I know how to handle big data, I'll know how to handle large data too. Aren't they the same? While big data is usually related to a specific set of technologies that rely on distributed processing, such as Hadoop a decade ago, Apache Spark and the majority of the modern cloud data warehouses, large data refers to a huge number of records in the dataset. And when I say a huge number, there is no golden value, like 100,000, 100 million or 1 billion records. But in most cases, datasets with less than 1 million rows are not considered large. Now that we know the difference between the big and large data, let's examine how Power BI fits these concepts. Under the hood of Power BI and Analysis Services tabular is Vertipack, columnar in-memory database. As Vertipack keeps the snapshot of the data in cache memory, all the data must reside on a single node, which means that Vertipack is not a distributed architecture. Because Vertipack works in a specific way, datasets also have to be modeled with certain rules in mind, so that the engine can perform in the most optimal way. Before I explain you how you should model your data for the large datasets, let's first understand the main characteristics of Vertipack and how it stores the data. As already mentioned, Vertipack is a columnar database. That means that the data in each column is stored physically separated from the data in other columns. Based on the number of distinct values in the column, which is known as cardinality, data distribution, are there many repeating values in the column, and data type, numeric versus text, Vertipack applies specific algorithm to compress the data. With all these points in mind, it's fair to say that Vertipack excels in vertical scanning while it performs much worse when it needs to retrieve the data from multiple different columns. So what would be the most desirable data structure for Vertipack and consequentially Power BI? Before we come to answer what is the best approach when designing for performance in Power BI, let's introduce two types of tables that are the most common in the data modeling process. When you have a huge number of rows, and we are talking about millions of rows, but just a few columns, we are talking about tall table. On the flip side, if a table consists of many columns, it's usually referred to as a wide table. There are two scenarios with wide tables. A table contains a lot of columns, but not many rows. Dimension tables are a good example. Or a table contains a lot of columns, but also a huge number of rows, so tall and wide at the same time. Depending on the table height in these two scenarios, Power BI will behave differently. 
if the table is either tall or wide. Vertipack should perform great. However, if the table is both tall and wide, that's usually a road to hell. If you're wondering how do these tables become part of the Power BI solution at all, well, a lot of Power BI developers transition from Excel, where working with one flat and wide table is a standard way of doing things. Additionally, a lot of developers blindly follow user's request, give me everything, and include all the columns from the source system, like the Power BI is a kitchen sink without thinking about the possible consequences. It's always better to start small and keep it simple and then extend the data model with additional tables and columns when the business case requires them. Here is the list of the recommended practices for large datasets optimization. Import only necessary data. I know that it sounds obvious, but trust me, in most cases sticking with just this simple rule will make astonishing savings in the data model size. Aggregate when possible. We will cover aggregations in more depth in one of the next videos. Keep in mind that aggregations reduce the table height, so Vertipack will have to scan a lower amount of data. Reduce the column cardinality. Cardinality is the biggest enemy for optimal data compression. There are various techniques for reducing the cardinality levels, such as summarizing the data, splitting columns and so on, so you may apply some of them to optimize the model shape. Use proper data types. If your users don't need to analyze data on the hour, minute or second level of granularity, and probably in 99% of cases they don't, there is no need to use date time data type. The plain date data type will be completely fine. Avoid tax calculated columns. To put it simple, these columns are not being optimally compressed. Whenever possible, apply calculations on the data source or eventually in Power Query. Turn off auto date time option. This is a general recommendation, but it may have a significant impact on the large data set specifically. If you keep this option turned on, Power BI will automatically create a hidden date table for each date column in your data model. Even though Power BI lets you sneak without proper data modeling to create shiny dashboards in a matter of minutes, I would strongly suggest not taking this shortcut path. As soon as your solution starts to grow, Without a well-taught data model and without sticking with recommended practices when dealing with large datasets, the solution becomes pretty much limited in terms of performance and scalability. That's all friends. If you find this video useful, make sure to click that like button. Also make sure to subscribe to Data Monster channel and don't miss any video in the future. See you next time.